will be able to hold on to the image that you are a perfect writer and can create a perfect piece of work that is beyond any sort of criticism. Put away your participation trophies and get ready for some real advice. Today, I'm sharing five harsh writing truths that you might not be prepared to hear. Wasn't this whole like harsh truths video thing a trend in like 2018? I guess I'm only eight years late to the trend, which is pretty good for me. All right, first up, harsh truth number one, writing even an exciting novel is going to be mostly boring tedium. The people who are most successful at writing are the ones who can stand the most boredom. If a project needs to be constantly engaging and exciting, then you're going to be disappointed and you likely won't finish it. The sort of novel passion that you have for your novel is likely not going to be sustained through the entire project. Sure, on the first draft, you'll love it. The story will seem fresh and engaging. The words will spring forth like an El Nino-fueled February ice melt. Wait until the third or fourth revision. Wait until you've gone over chapter six 12 times. Wait until you need to go through and massage the sentence structure or alter the word count or fix a plot hole that your 11th beta reader found, which was somehow missed by the first 10. Writing something as big as a novel quickly becomes a slog. It becomes hard. Pushing through that is something very few people can manage and it's why so many people struggle to finish writing their novel. Yes, you can be passionate about a project, even in love with it. You can have a vision and a goal and a burning desire to get it done. Yes, you should feel all the same emotions that you're hoping the reader will feel. Sadness, happiness, joy, excitement. But you are not going to fanatically run towards your project every single day. There are going to be days when you feel like doing anything else, where just the mere thought of writing will push the bile to the very back of your throat. It's the writers who can still produce on those days that will see the most improvement and will get the most work done. And that is only a small fraction of people. Next up, harsh truth. Next up, harsh. Next up, harsh truth number two. I can't say harsh truth very well. Harsh truth number two. You will likely never reach your full potential as a writer. Have you heard those stories where like a parent will pull a Mack truck off one of their kids in a massive burst of adrenaline? Have you also found it hard to get any work done on a Saturday, even though you've rested with a 12 hour nap and have eaten 3,800 calories of Doritos and pizza? Your body and mind are wired in so many ways to make you do as little work as possible. Unless you're starving or your life is in danger or you haven't, you know, in a while, then your body and mind are perfectly happy letting you sit around and accomplish nothing. Everyone can probably write significantly more than they do. Everyone can probably work significantly harder than they do. Everyone probably has potential that they're not realizing. There is a very, very small minority of people out there working to their actual potential because doing that is extremely hard to do. It's exhausting, it involves sacrifices, you have to do it like literally every day. There are very few people who actually work that hard. But for the majority of us, including myself, we are not reaching our full potential. We are not doing all that we could be doing. Working smarter and more efficiently can get you part of the way there, but there's little substitute for seat time. You just need to be putting effort in, putting time in. You will be a very old person someday, unless you already are one today. Looking back and realizing that you could have written more novels, you could have gotten better at improving your skills, you could have done more. But doing more is hard and most people won't do it. Harsh truth number three, some of your favorite ideas likely won't work. There's a phrase passed around in writing circles that goes something like kill your darlings or there's some other variations of that phrase. Different people interpret this phrase in different ways, but one of the interpretations has to do with scenes or plots or characters or even entire novels that you, the writer, really like but end up not working. Sometimes they don't fit with the overall tone of the story. Sometimes they break something in the setting. Sometimes they make a character act in a way that's a violation of their characterization. Sometimes it's just blatant coolness that the writer really wants to cram in, but it just doesn't really fit for various reasons. 
or maybe it's something that you really, really like, but your beta readers or critique partners hate or don't get, or they suggest you do something completely different. Sometimes you'll be able to fix it and make it work, but sometimes the only thing to do is to let it go, to kill your darling. For the good of your novel, a scene you are absolutely in love with, a scene that you spent perhaps weeks imagining and hours writing, will likely end up on the scrap heap. It will hurt, but your project will be better for it. Harsh truth number four. Your ideas, as great as they are, don't really matter all that much. Execution matters way more than your ideas. There's this obsession among some people around ideas. Usually it's with very beginner writers or people who aren't writers. These are the people who tend to get fixated on ideas. These folks like to talk about ideas and the quality of different ideas and ask people if they think their idea is worth turning into a novel. They'll worry whether they have a good enough idea and they'll ask famous authors where these authors get their ideas. Ideas are important, but execution matters a lot more. Execution is also a lot harder. An excellent execution of a mediocre idea will almost always outperform a mediocre execution of an excellent idea. Imagining a story is relatively easy. Writing it down in a way that captures your vision is the hard part. This goes beyond just the writing world, whether it's in business or research or work or other art forms. It's the people who can execute on ideas well who do well, even if the ideas aren't that original or novel. Building good skills around execution will always get you farther. It's way harder, but it will be worth it. And lastly, harsh truth number five, you will never finish your novel, only abandon. Because as they say, great art is never finished, only abandoned. I wonder if whoever came up with that quote was going to add more to it. At some point, you will need to walk away from your project. For a work in progress to become a not work in progress requires only one step. Well, actually several steps because you're walking away from it, which implies more than one. And with this walking away comes the potential for regret or worse. At some point, your work will be out in the world without you, either tucked away in a dusty drawer or on the shelves of a bookstore or an Amazon warehouse. And from your newfound distance, you'll be able to observe many things. Maybe you could have fixed chapter six. Maybe Fred shouldn't have gotten the girl after all. Maybe there's a typo on line 38 of page 85 that is going to haunt your dreams. If you let them, these regrets will ruin your life. You will be thinking about what could have been, you will be imagining ways you could go back and fix it, all sorts of things. Of course, there's a solution, never finish. Of course, never finishing means never sharing, never publishing, if that's your goal. Never letting your story do the thing it and all other stories are meant to do. Your story will never make a difference in the world. No one will ever experience it but you. No one will ever enjoy it. It will never change anyone's life. It won't make you a single dollar. But you will have not let it go. You will still have the opportunity to make it perfect. You will still have the opportunity to fix all of its flaws. And by keeping it there, you will never have to come to grips with any of your own flaws, and you will be able to hold on to the image that you are a perfect writer and can create a perfect piece of work that is beyond any sort of criticism. This, of course, is a fantasy and a sign that you're failing to accept this harsh truth. You've gripped your novel so closely, but to fully realize your novel, you need to let go. Your novel needs to be finished, just like this video is finished. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was kind of negative, which I usually don't do, but it's a nice change, and found the advice in it useful. If you want to see more stuff like this, you can check out all my other writing advice related videos and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.